Thank you for staying with us. So, on Saturday, the Niger Republic junta announced it is suspending military cooperation with Washington and that U.S. flights over the country's territory in recent weeks were illegal. It's been a marathon of discussion since, as Niger plays a central role in the U.S. military operations in Africa's Sahel region and is home to a major air base. Pentagon Deputy Press Secretary Sabrina Singh said Monday that the U.S. officials had lessons, but the Niger Junta spokesman said the U.S. tone was condescending and threatened the uh, Niger Republic's sovereignty. Since the July coup, the country has ended its security partnerships with the European Union and France and, had, they have, withdrawn, and have withdrawn their troops from the country. To share informed views on this, I am joined by David Otter, Director, Geneva Center for Africa Security and Strategic Studies, Nigeria. It's good to have you on one slot. Thank you for giving us your time. It seems Niger oh, for having me. It, it seems Niger does not want the US military on its soil. Summarize for us your view of Saturday's events and why it is significant? Well, I think from what we know so far, uh, the Nigerian junta has revoked uh, the military accord, uh, which was signed uh, between 2012 and 2014. Um, effectively, that accord allowed uh, the United States to build one of its most valuable, uh, from a US perspective, uh, military base, um, which of course, uh, this is a military base that focuses on intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. Um, it's a base that, you know, can fly C-19 uh, cargo jets, you know, uh, I mean, I'm talking about very large uh, military aircraft, uh, but it's also one of the very few bases uh, that the U.S. deploys, you know, what we call armed drones um, that are remotely controlled. So the U.S. had struggled uh, initially to find any country that would allow, and I'm talking about the uh, U.S. African Command, the U.S. African Command, they call it U.S. AFRICOM. They had actually struggled to find any African country that would allow them to have this military base. And they struck gold uh, in 2012 and 2014 when the then uh, Nigerian government allowed them to build that military base. This is a base that uh, is estimated to cost about 110 uh, 220 million U.S. dollars, and it's, it's about uh, the equivalent of uh, 13 million uh, being spent on a daily, sorry, on a on a yearly basis to uh, actually keep this base running. So for the United States, um, you know, this was one of the most uh, valuable base. You know, it actually uh, uses that to conduct strikes uh, around Niger, um, as far as Somalia, Libya. Uh, but even as close to Nigeria. So it actually targets seven terrorist organizations, including the likes of Boko Haram, Al-Shabaab, uh, the Islamic State of the, the Greater Sahel, um, you know, uh, Islamic State in Libya. So there are more than seven terrorist designated organizations that the U.S. You know, um, goes after using this military base. So fast forward, uh, the, the military coup that occurred uh, in, in Niger, Initially, the U.S. distanced itself uh, from the, the French, you know, because, of course, the toxicity that the French brand uh, in terms of uh, its uh, uh, neo-colonial and, you know, uh, you know, during the colonial period, that uh, rhetoric of uh, the French has to go um, was something which, you know, the U.S. tried to distance itself from. Um, when the French and the Nigerian uh, were having issues and the French were pushing for some kind of uh, an intervention through ECOWAS, um, the U.S., you know, tried to, first of all, did not acknowledge uh, that uh, this was a military coup. Um, it waited until, you know, very, I think, I think it was December or something, that's when the U.S. said, uh, you know, did ag agree uh, that uh, this was a military coup. So, Effectively, the U.S. you know wanted to continue to do business uh, with Niger because, of course, that's a very expensive military base. But it does appear uh, that the conditions uh, under which you know the U.S. has set, you know, has some kind of you know triggered um, you know this uh, uh, the military junta to say to the U.S. that, of course, um, you know, this is not going to happen. 
uh, and it has given them the ammunition uh, to say to the U.S. that it has threatened its territorial integrity. Perhaps the U.S. may have suggested uh, that uh, the Nigerian uh, junta should uh, discontinue any relationship with um, other strategic partners, for example, Russia. And maybe the Nigerian saw this as some kind of condescending in, in the terms that they described. Okay. So um, here we are uh, in a position where, um, you know, the Nigerian have kicked out the French. Uh, they've kicked out uh, the, uh, you know, the, well, they, they've, you know, actually established what you call the Alliance of Sahelian States. All right. Um, so, uh, I mean, <laughs> you, you've clearly established that it is a significant development that we're dealing with. And that's yes. why everyone is talking about it. But before we move on, let me quickly um, clarify something you said. You, you, you were um, a bit unsure if it was December or October. I think it was in October that they accepted that it was a coup. And then in December, they said there's a possibility they can still have uh, relationships. Uh, back to the conversation, um, uh, there was, from everything I've seen online, there, there was no clear reason given for the decision by the Niger um, Junta. They only made the announcement that they don't want them there. Is there a background that could give insights as to why they chose to ask the U.S. to leave? I think time is everything, and everything is about timing. Um, you know, so why now? I mean, that's the question you're asking. I think the possibility, uh, from what we know, is that the United States, um, you know, had a visit, uh, and a very high-profile visit, um, uh, which, you know, was uh, led by their envoy, Modipi. And, and, of course, there is a possibility that, you know, the envoy, one, according to the Nigerian junta, did not, in, did not uh, kind of inform uh, them of the composition of, of that envoy, uh, of that delegation. Possibly they were not informed of the uh, discussions that were supposed to be had. And, and I think another reason uh, is that, you know, I think there may have been some kind of a suggestion. Remember the U.S. said in December that it will continue to give aid to Niger, um, but subject to conditions. So I think perhaps one of the conditions that the U.S. may have proposed, or the U.S. envoy, or the delegation may have proposed is that we can continue to give you aid as long as you do not um, maybe you know share the the country or you know have any partnership with Russia or or some other partnership with um, Burkina Faso or Mali. We don't know. Um, you know these are very secretive discussions. But for the Nigerian government or the junta to have said that they are re revoking without any warning. Um, the military uh, alliance, uh, well, the military um, agreement between uh, uh, United States and, uh, and Niger with immediate effect tells you that, you know, something went wrong, which was not expected. And the only thing I can think in mind uh, that yeah. this was at a time when Russia election was going on. Uh, yeah. So there could be some links there. Um, but, you know, I think the big question uh, that the United States Congress will be asking AFRICOM and the State Department is, was this one of the scenarios that was figured out when this military base was being established? Or uh, does this come as a surprise uh, even to uh, the U.S. State Department and AFRICOM? So I think Congress will want to know, you yeah, know I if think this was more than well spent. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I quite agree with you because what the statement that the spokesperson made um, simply alluded to the fact that some of the um, tone was disrespectful. The tone was, um, um, <clears throat> you know, sort of disrespectful to their sovereignty. So basically, one would assume that there are instructions that they were not uh, comfortable with. Then again, it, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, Pentagon Deputy Press Secretary um, did say on Monday that they had discussions with officials uh, the, 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 the discussion was spurred by concerns over Niger's potential relationships with Russia and Iran that you've mentioned. Uh, scholars like yourself are saying it's more America-centric than anything else. It has nothing to do with what benefits Africa and Niger in particular, really. What's your view on that? I think from a Nigerian point of view, um, they would be asking the big question. Uh, the U.S. base 201 um, in Agadex, you know, has been there since 2012. They would want to see the report card. I mean, they would want to see how effective security around the region. And if you look at that, you know, from a, a scholar's perspective or from an outsider's perspective or from an analyst's point of view, 
um, you, you can simply tell that you know there hasn't been much progress uh, in terms of the counter incidents of patients. Yes, the U.S. has deployed uh, its drones from that region the right down to Somalia. And as I mentioned, there are seven terrorist designated groups that these particular base is meant to deal with. But for the Nigerian, there will be concern about the insecurity within the region, not just Niger, uh, but of course within Mali and Burkina Faso. So for the Niger uh, um, junta, they would think this has not been effective because of course uh, there are still issues within uh, their region and, and they would think, well, if this is just not benefiting us, why do we have to continue to have it? From the U.S. point of view, um, the U.S. would want to not just look at Niger as a country on its own in terms of you know, how effective it has been, uh, but you want to look at other regions like Somalia, uh, you know, areas like uh, um, you know, Chad, um, which of course you know, the French has interest in, um, areas like Libya. Uh, they would want to look at it as an overall um, counter incidency operation. But mind you, this is all not just for the uh, interest of uh, the Nigerian or the regional um, you know, insecurity. I think this is more or less the U.S. Uh, placing itself in a position uh, in, in geopolitics which would interest, you know, its, um, its outpost. So, um, yeah, so for the Nigerians, if it's not an effective uh, 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 deployment, if it doesn't serve the purpose of, you know, uh, bringing stability within the region, then why continue to have it? Go for ahead. the Americans... You want to have it because, of course, it does save their interest. Okay, uh, I'm told um, we have less than two minutes to wrap up. I'll, I'll just quickly ask, how does this um, decision, uh, the withdrawal of the U.S. military presence, impact security situation regionally and the junta's uh, control in the country? I know it's, I, I thought we had more time. Well, I think, you know, first of all, um, the junta has, you know, made an alliance with Mali, Burkina Faso, uh, to uh, have some kind of uh, a defense pact to fight against insurgency. Any counterinsurgency operation that is ended abruptly will leave a very huge gap. Um, how does the Nigerian government, how do the other countries want to fill this gap? Um, is now left to uh, perhaps, you know, the likes of the multinational joint tax force, um, what, else, what else is remaining of G5 Sahel? Uh, and perhaps, I think, uh, to conclude, I think, maybe Niger is looking at bringing in other partners. You know, it could be Russia, um, it could be um, expanding the confederation or the federation of states between Mali and Burkina Faso to uh, cover that gap. But for now, uh, I believe that um, it's not yet over. Uh, the U.S. Right. may try to negotiate. It's too expensive for the U.S. to just let go. All right, David, thank you so much for speaking with us. It's always a pleasure to have you on one slot. I appreciate the insights that you give to us. Thank you. Thank you. And that's a wrap on one slot for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you join us again next week for conversations like this. Take good care.